Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back in War Thunder having a look at some of the change logs which have happened well over the last week or so. But before we do that, there is two changes which have happened to the planned battle rating changes. Uh, we actually went over these, you know, about a week ago or so, maybe a few days ago, but two have been added to the list. And the uh, two that have been added are the M4748A, which is the uh, German Sherman, which you could have purchased to get into the beta uh, of or the closed barrier, I should say, of ground forces. On top of this, uh, they also, I believe, left it to be bought in a limited number on the store for a ridiculous amount of money. But that is now getting dropped to 3.7. Uh, so that follows uh, the M4A2 in that, and then the M48A2 GA2 which is the new German M48, is getting dropped by 0.3 BR to 7.7. So now it is literally the same BR as the M48, which it is a distinctly better version of. Wonderful. The M48 uh, A2 G A2 uh, is the machine that you see here. Covered it on the dev server, hasn't really changed that much. But basically the big uh, upgrade is the L7 A3. And... What you find is that it has access to a really good heat FS round, has access to a really good saber round, but it seems like the upgun nature of it, uh, they, the statistics or gadget in themselves do not believe that it is better than the M48 or the M60, which you find here, even though it has a distinctly better gun and it uh, is just a better vehicle. <laughs> I'm guessing they just don't think it's that much of a better vehicle. Anyway, uh, it is very sad to see this. Uh, I personally believe that it should stay at Ato just because of the usefulness of its gun and the fact that uh, it is just a better version of its counterparts that it will face. I generally, like, from this point of view, right, so you have the M48 uh, A2 GA2. If we have a look at it right here, right, it's a very similar profile to the M48. But the gun is distinctly better. It has a better reload, right? It has better rounds. It has pretty much better everything when it comes to the gun. There is nothing that is better than the M48 or the M60 gun that you see here. The 105 M68 is very similar to it. Uh, it's pretty much the same gun, but the M60 is slightly different to the M48 in the shape of it. Now, let's have a look at a few other vehicles that have been missed out by these BR changes. The Rice P. Now, if you're going to tell me the Rice P is doing better than the Leopard A1A1 or the Leopard A1A1 L44, which are both getting dropped to 8.7, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Uh, the M60 series of vehicles is in a very tough spot, whether you look at the M6 Air 1 AOS or the M60 or the M60 uh, Rice P. So hopefully they get dropped at least at some point. For me personally, it's very sad to see uh, that uh, these tanks are being overlooked, but hopefully in the future uh, they won't be. I would actually personally drop the American uh, the American M48 to 7.3. I think it's catastrophic that they are at the same BR uh, as each other. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Anyway, next point. So uh, the, the server updates, this was on the 21st, they actually added in two pretty interesting mechanics. So the first one is uh, a system which allows you to keep track of the rounds that you have fired uh, has been added. And this is for uh, only arcade naval. And it's when you're firing distances of three and a half kilometers or more with uh, with uh, shells which are 100 millimeters of caliber or more. Uh, sorry, or guns, sorry, which are 100 millimeters of caliber or more. So pretty much what we're talking about here is destroyers. Uh, because destroyers, they fight at this range and also uh, they have guns this big. There are a few smaller ships uh, which have larger guns, uh, such as... Uh, if we go, I believe, uh, the Dark Class, which has 114 on the front of it, uh, but the majority of the 100 millimeters or greater, you're going to see on stuff like the G, the Clemson and uh, the G-Class and stuff like that. So we're pretty much just talking about this is specific to destroyers. So what does this look like? Well, first of all, I'll just show you, if you do play arcade destroyers and you want to see this for yourself, uh, you go to uh, Options, Controls, right here, go to Ship, go to weaponry 
and it should be at the bottom here. So this is the new mechanic that they've added. It highlights projectiles fall point, which is what it's called. So uh, I'm going to show you it instead of just explaining it, because it is a little bit uh, hard to explain uh, why it's uh, implemented, and I'll go into why. So this is supposed to help with aiming. Let's just turn off all my guns so they don't start going off. That destroyer is five kilometers away. So I have 120 millimeter guns on this machine, uh, G-Class I believe it's called, and uh, it's five kilometers away, therefore we should see some targeting uh, lines. So we fire off, no targeting lines, and as you can see, that's what they look like. So let's fire again. So you can see at the tail end of when your shots fall near the enemy, they create these green lines around it and this shows you where the shells land uh, compared to where you fire them so it only shows you the ending maybe i don't know 500 meters of when they're falling out of the air of the targets this is supposed to help you with targeting and all of this personally like when i look like that i don't think it looks very nice at all and i can't really tell you know it, it just looks like a blob to me but then when I uh, zoom in a little bit, I can see the shells coming in, I can see their trajectory, I can understand why this mechanic is here. I don't understand how it helps you with aiming though, uh, unless it's trying to do the same thing as the ranging shots, where you know, you fire a ranging shot, it tells you, uh, you know, slightly how far you are away, so then you can line up your next shot. It's also designed so you can see, like, um, hey, let's do this. Alright, so can I get all of my guns to fire at this? Maybe not. Hey, let's uh, let's get into the hider. But basically, uh, the the way they have said it, it's a way to distinguish your guns between all the other guns that you have. So if we take uh, the hider here, which has a few more uh, guns than the other one uh, that we're playing. The, the thing is, uh, if you can use them to target a single target, which would be this destroyer over here, there we go, hopefully the large guns uh, go over there and start shooting, then the idea is the guns that you're using, uh, you'll be able to tell what they look like compared to the others. So you can see the other ones firing in there. It's also to show uh, compared to other uh, other shells which are coming in. So you can see the ones that even I'm not firing, they're coming in and you can see the shells as well. So it becomes a little bit of a mess uh, <laughs> when there's all of these shells going in. Uh, but it, it shows you the trajectory of where your shells are going uh, compared to every other machine. So if you are struggling with uh, shots like this, where you can't line up the shot properly, and uh, you're trying to see where it's uh, landing, then you can definitely, you know, sort it out, as you can see here. It gives you a good mark on where to actually aim the shells, but overall, I think it looks kind of messy. And um, what I mean by this is I don't personally like the green color. Uh, I wish I could change that. On top of this, I think just giving an arc would be just much better. Maybe some people would see that as uh, kind of... Uh, cheating, but remember this is an arcade mechanic. Like, what about a system like this that you have for uh, that you have for torpedoes? Apart from it's uh, just an arc system instead, kind of like how uh, it used to be for the old artillery, I suppose, but uh, with an actual visual aid to it. Because right now, as you can see using the green, it definitely makes you know your shells stand out compared to others, but it doesn't look nice, uh, and maybe. Maybe that's the uh, thing for me. Maybe I would like it to look a little bit nicer, and I'm sure with time it'll get more refined. I understand why they put this mechanic in the game, but for me, uh, I'd, I have never had an issue where I can't tell where my shells are. And I actually thought about this. Like Maybe uh, maybe it's because I run at 1920 by 1080 Maybe it's because uh, other people have smaller screens. Maybe they're playing on laptops. Maybe that's why this has been added in. So I can at least understand it from that point of view, you know, uh, why it may be a good mechanic. So... I'd, uh... I, I think putting an arc in would be better than just having the entrail of something, but overall, I get why it's there. 
Uh, the mechanics of aircraft usage in naval battles have been changed, uh, so now it's not possible to use aircraft with a higher BR than 0.6 of the maximum ship BR in one's lineup. Additionally, prohibited aircraft will not be taken into account for matchmaking. So, pretty much as it says here, if a player has a setup such as this, ship BR 2.7, ship BR 3.0, ship uh, aircraft BR 3.0, aircraft 3.7, uh, will join a battle with a BR between 2.0 and 4.0 and will not be able to use the aircraft of BR 3.7. So you pretty much can only go with your aircraft 0.3 up or down from your highest vehicle. So uh, let's give an example. Uh, the Clems in here, well, let's go to the G class. So the G class is 4.0. This means that I can bring a 4.3 vehicle and I can also bring a, a, you know, anything lower. It doesn't matter about lower, it just means above. So I can bring a 4.3 Typhoon, but I can't bring a Brigand, which is 4.7. And this should be visualized by this. Or maybe this. No, it's not visualized. Well, that's very sad. But yeah, uh, so the idea is you can only go 0.3 above. When it says 0.6, what it's talking about is just the, uh, just the, uh, you know, the number here. So it would be 4.6 maximum. We don't have 0.6 in the game. We have 0.3 and we have 0.7. Uh, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's simple as that. If it's, um, 3.7 though, and, uh, you can run in a 4.3, because it's 3.7 to 4.0 to 4.3. So you see where the 0.6 comes in. It's basically limiting it so you can't just take like uh, crazy uh, high tier vehicles in lower tier games. And uh, basically up tiering yourself just to get into aircraft. Now that they reduce the spawn cost of aircraft, it is definitely required uh, for this. So people can't just, you know, spam a very fast boat. Uh, get into it and uh, cap the point and then go into and then uh, go into you know uh, a plane and wreck face it's a system which i'm sure is being tested right now uh, for use in other stuff like ground forces a lot of people have talked about the issue uh, with people taking in reserve vehicles and then just getting into helicopters so i'm guessing they are testing it here and it may be put into other game modes. I think overall it's a good idea though. Uh, you should try and have each uh, part of each part of your tree at least uh, similar to the others. Maybe from a person who's played like the game for a long time. Maybe that's uh, a little bit biased towards you know the fact that I've researched a lot of stuff. But uh, maybe you know what if you run into a person who only likes helicopters so they get to rank five of a nation and then they just want to play helicopters so there is a little bit of, a bit of a trade-off here but for balance reasons i would like this uh, mechanic added into ground forces i think that would work pretty well the next one is just a generic update where it fixes two bugs. So a bug discarding the gamepad cursor speed uh, setting value after every game launch has been fixed and a bug affecting performance during camera movement in the hangar on the consoles has been fixed. Uh, so hopefully you have some stable frame rates. Now the last one is another server update. And we're actually getting a new naval mission type, which is wonderful. We're also getting a single time pop-up in the hangar screen, uh, which recommends that people try vehicles and game modes they haven't played yet. Uh, that has been added, so there you go. So uh, I don't know what that looks like because I'm pretty sure I've played all of the different things. Uh, maybe this one down here. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll get a little pop-up which says, hey, give this a go. And uh, obviously it's only a one-time thing, so it won't be a big deal. So, uh, this is a new uh, naval game mode. It's called Battle, and uh, it seems to be a personification of the battle game mode that we have in uh, Ground Forces. If I just have a look at custom battles right now, let's just see. Because I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, if, I don't believe it's called Battle. No, Battle is just the, when each team has one respawn point but the one I'm thinking of is like on jungle uh, there there is a map on jungle which uh, would it be called skirmish no uh, it, it's pretty much like a 
The, the famous one is on jungle. So what happens is you both have a point that you have to capture, and when you capture that point, your respawn point actually moves, and then you have it triggers another point that you have to capture, and then once you capture that, it triggers the final point that you have to capture. That's pretty much how it works, right? Uh, it's a pretty interesting mode. It's probably called Siege or something like that, but... Uh, you don't really get it on a lot of maps because it has a fundamental flaw in ground forces of the, <laughs> the initial point once you capture it and if you get killed where you can just spawn on the other side of the map where the enemy is trying to capture a point and defend it and kill as many enemy as you want. So it's really easy to game the system <laughs> on those maps. Now we have a, as I said, a personification of it in naval forces and this one uh, is kind of interesting. So this is the example of it. If we just have a look here, maybe if I scroll it in a little bit, yeah, you can see it'll see it all one more. So it's a new mission type for uh, naval battles. In battle mode, uh, teams will initially have one strategic point uh, that is not available for capture by the enemy team. In order to activate an enemy strategic point for capture, you must control both of the regular capture points, A and B and capturing an enemy strategic point will result in an instant victory. So very similar to the battle conditions that we have in ground forces, apart from uh, you also have to capture these points first. I think this is really interesting, so let's just recap. So let's say we spawn on the blue side here. Our team has to capture A and B, and once they are captured, that opens up the ability to capture their end zone. So uh, once we have these, uh, you can capture the end zone. Now, uh, once once that does, that means that you can instantly win the battle, but also at the same time, it means that uh, you can still win by just annihilating the enemy team or them annihilating you. What this does, in my opinion, is elongate the match, and it means that uh, since all the other game modes are just three domination points, it means that a, a team cannot just control two domination points and, and win, which is very, very easy to do with a squad. Uh, with this type of battle, uh, or with this type of map, you are sat in a place where you have to either split your forces or you have to fight all over the map. Like, I think that's a really great idea. It means that if you just focus on one area of the map, you're not going to win. Like, you, you're going to have to try and work out where your forces may be the weakest, so you can make the biggest difference there, or you're going to have to work out, you know, where do you want to push as a team. And I think this just opens up a lot more abilities than just the, the three capture points, because the issue with the three capture points, as I said, is it's very easy to control. The way, if, it, if uh, we take this uh, map, for example, you have three capture points. So you have one here, you have one here, and one here. So all you have to do is just control this little corridor here, and you win the battle. On this new uh, mode, you have to actually be able to control the whole map. So the idea is uh, you can only win if you have complete dominance over the enemy or if you have annihilated them. And I think this is a great move. It's much better than the domination idea. It should be a lot less uh, RNG. Uh, the, there'll be much more on the individual to make outplays instead of... Uh, uh, let's just say dis <laughs> disconcerted teamwork. I think I I like this idea. I would like to see it in tanks as well, but uh, it would be kind of slow in tanks unless we're talking about the low tiers, but I think that's completely fine. It would mean that an enemy would be able to come back from uh, a snowball effect. So if you start getting snowballed at one point in ground forces, what generally happens is they just push through you and just go and spawn camp. Well, in a scenario like this, you can't do that because you won't be able to win the battle because the enemy team will just do the same to you on the other side of the map. Or if they decide to fight you, you know, it depends who wins that. Maybe nobody goes to the other side of the map, which also may be an issue. Uh, it does, it does highly, uh, it is highly important on this type of game mode, uh, uh, where you actually spawn and where you actually go towards first. Because if your whole team goes one way and you go the other, well, you're going to have a bad day. But if the enemy team does the same thing, then uh, what will happen is whoever wins the initial battle wins. But if you go to opposite sides, uh, then you can start picking off. And I'm sure 
uh, there'll be like an easier point for each side and then you kind of you, the idea is you meet in the middle and then whoever wins that is able to capture the points overall i think this is a really cool idea one thing i do need to see uh, once you have captured the points, uh, do they stay captured or can you recapture them? And if you can recapture A and B, does that un does that lock the uh, enemy strategic point behind it? This is something I'm going to test out. I played a bunch of naval games today. Didn't get this one. Didn't get this a single one, so I couldn't test that fact. But overall, I'm really interested in this new map. I think it's got a lot of potential, and to be honest, it could be put in air and it also could be put in ground so hopefully this is a new game mode which we see in the other parts of the game i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time